Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. And may the Lord bless our worship this morning. We welcome you all to worship here at St. Matthew, and we welcome those of you watching us on Facebook as well. Today is the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Next week is the last Sunday after the Epiphany, which we'll celebrate Transfiguration. Um, the theme for today is keeping in, keeping in mind our anacronym, L-A-S-S-I-E. Last week it was listen and ask. Today, Pastor Blonsky will talk about seeking and sharing, the SS of Lassie, based on 1 Corinthians 3, that's in the second reading. Please be sure to fill out a We Care card for us. Uh, they're found in the pew. Visitors and guests, please fill out the red side, members of the blue. The service this morning is the service is a choral order of the divine service where hymns are placed in place of the regular liturgy. There will be a feeding of the lambs following the gospel reading this morning, and we'll also celebrate the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. Our service begins with the singing of the hymn, Lord Help Us Ever to Retain, as printed on page 3 of the service folder. And again, may the Lord God bless our time together. In the words in which the Lord put his name on us in our baptism, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon me. Forgive me all my sins 
and lead me to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nation. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy because, together before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. To God on high, Together, let us pray to the Lord. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes, and his just decrees, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, 
blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and, J and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. Together, so neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Has already committed adultery with her in his heart. 
If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Could you have the children come on up here with me for the feeding of the lambs? This isn't your first time up here, is it? You've been coming up for the last couple of weeks, I think, over the, that. And, and what has been up here for the last couple of weeks for the feeding of the lambs, do you know? That's missing today. A candle. We have had a candle of some sort over the last four or five of the feedings of the lambs here. Um, but this day, I want, I want you to think that you are the candle, right? You have the light of Jesus burning inside of you. Okay, and we've been teaching you a song. We've been singing this little light of mine, right? So let's hold our candle up. We're going to sing that together, okay? And we'll sing almost all the stanzas that we know, all right? And if you don't, you hold it up. And if you don't know it, you'll learn it, right? And everyone else can help us too. Now, Michael played a different tune, and he got the different tune in my head. I don't want to use that tune. There we go. Thank you very much. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Now, do we hide it under a bushel? No. What do we say? Hide it under a bushel. No! no. I'm going to let it shine. Did I wake you up? Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out, right? Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. And you live in a neighborhood, right? You want it to shine all around the neighborhood, all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine all around the neighborhood. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine all the time, let it shine. Now there's one more. We let it shine because we want other people to know the way to heaven, which is through Jesus, who is our light, right? It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine. 
It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine. It will point the way to heaven. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Let it shine. Would you fold your hands and prop, bow your heads and you can pray with me, okay? I'll say the words and you repeat them. Dear God, Dear God we thank you, we thank you. For, Jesus, for Jesus, who is our light, and shines in us so others may know him and go to heaven. Help us to shine wherever we go. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. We're going to sing in your hymnals. Turn to hymn number 650, the first two stanzas of Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. As we now are starting to wrap up this series on everyone, his witness, that's every one of you and me, we come to the acronym LASI. Last week we had listen and ask, the L and the A. And I wanted you to first notice how Jesus also listened to other people. As he came to the Jordan River to be baptized by his cousin John, John says something to him. You come to be baptized by me? I need to be baptized by you. Jesus listened to John and then answered him according to what he had heard. And then a little while later in Jerusalem, Jesus is in a, a house at night, kind of hanging around with his disciples. He goes up on the rooftop in the cool of the night and a man by the name of Nicodemus comes and starts talking with Jesus. And Jesus listens to him and then answers by what he hears from Nicodemus. He knows where Nicodemus is in his walk with God, and he answers. He listens to that. And of course, he utters one of the most famous Bible passages of all time, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus listens to other people. And I also wanted you to notice how Jesus sometimes asks questions. That's the A in Lassie. We listen and then we ask based on what we have just heard or listened to. Two of John the Baptist's disciples hear John say, to, as Jesus walks by, behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. And then these two disciples start following Jesus, and Jesus turns around and asks them, What are you seeking? And I'll get to seeking in a moment. 
And then there's another story where Jesus is at the pool of Bethesda, and there is a man there who cannot walk, and he has been at the pool because of a legend that if the first person who goes into the pool after an angel comes down and stirs the water, they would be healed. And Jesus asks him, do you want to be healed? He had been listening to what this, old, this, this invalid had been saying with his whole life, and he asks him a question to draw him out what it is that he wants. Now, I must confess to you, I have not always been a good listener. I have been like so many other people. When somebody is talking, I'm trying to formulate in my mind what I'm going to say while they're still talking. I'm not really listening to them. I have made it one of my goals to be a better listener, to be as you know, premarital counseling uh, training that I had taken, an uh, active listener, to actually listen to what they are saying, not to respond, but to just hear them. Where are they coming from? And then what I say will be based on what I had just heard. When we say, or what we say after someone has talked to us, if we are listening to them, what we will say, even if it's asking questions, will be based absolutely on what we had just heard what they had just said. And then we can ask questions that will help them further tell us what is on their minds and where they are in their walk with God, if indeed they are walking with God. And then that will lead us in how we can witness to them about Jesus. So that's the L and the A. Then there's the two S's, seek and share. Even Jesus sought out people. He went to Samaria to seek out the woman at the well. He went to Galilee to seek out Peter and Andrew and James and John. He even went to the road of Damascus to seek out Paul to make him a disciple to the Gentiles. And then there's the S, share. And Jesus would share with people. Usually something to the effect that, behold, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then he would share with them, this is what I, I want you to do. Repent and follow me. And that can also be part of the invite and encourage, but Pastor Kinney will take that next week. Let me take a little bit closer look at the two S's. Seek and share with you this morning. Now, we have been here as a congregation for a long time, over 150 years. In our neighborhood, though, just to the south of Barrington, there is a very big church called Willow Creek Community Church. And Pastor Bill Hybels, who recently retired, started that church, what, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, something like that. And it was almost as if, as we look at the campus today at Willow Creek, he was under the uh, impression that if you build it, they will come. It turns out that that wasn't so much the truth. In fact, people came to Willow Creek not because they built this huge campus. They built this huge campus because people were coming to hear about Jesus. And Bill Hybels is credited with starting what's been known, become to known as the seeker service. And so that's one of our words in this Lassie, to seek. But in Luther, Lutheran evangelism, we have a little bit different take on that whole concept of seek and seeker. When we use the word seek, we're not really talking about the people we are see, that, who, who come to us seeking a way. What we're doing is when we use the word seek, we are the ones who are seeking other people. We don't build a place or we don't hold a service so that people can seek us. We go out and seek other people to find the opportune time to witness to Jesus to them. And you will also find in seeking that we find a way to share the faith in such a way that the message will be heard and the message will be received, which is based on listening to what they say and asking them questions to draw them out, follow-up questions. Now this may sound intimidating, or it may sound overwhelming. I don't have anything that I can do in me that will help other people become a Christian. I can't convert anybody. That's the overwhelming part. And if that does sound intimidating, I completely understand. But in addition to seeking out people to witness to, we also need to seek out God's plan 
for our witnessing. Hence the reading from 1 Corinthians that we have already heard and that I will bring up again in just a little bit. I'm thinking of the story, though, in the book of Acts. Peter and Cornelius. Peter is given a vision of what it is that he is going to be doing when he goes to someone who isn't Jewish. And then Cornelius is given, by the power of God, people that will come around him that will tell him about Jesus and about the apostles and about Peter especially. God was preparing both of them for their encounter. And God does the same thing for us. He prepares us. He strengthens us and he encourages us to listen and to ask and to seek out and to share as well as invite and encourage. Point is, you will not be left without resources or power from God. So you seek out people to share or witness to about Jesus. It could be someone who works next to you in the cubicle next to you if you work at a desk or down the hall or somebody on the same assembly line, or it could be someone that's in the desk next to you at school, or the locker next to you in the hallways. It could be someone that lives in your neighborhood that you see as you're walking the dog in the morning and you talk to them. These are the people you seek out to be able to witness to Jesus about. And as you witness to them, you're listening to them, maybe you're asking them questions then, seeking them out, right, and then sharing, move in for the share. And so what are you going to share? Well, Jesus, yes, but let's put a distinctly Lutheran take on this. What we share with them is law and gospel. Because that is something that Lutherans are known for, even outside of Lutheran circles. I have a Methodist friend that says, you've got that legacy of being able to share in a unique way law and gospel. And I would ask him, then why aren't you a Lutheran? And I never get an answer from him. Something about his parents and grandparents and great-grandparents being Methodists. I understand that too. You know how sometimes when you uh, have some good news and bad news to people, right? I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. And then you ask them, what do you want first? The good news or the bad news? Well, when we're sh witnessing to Jesus and we're going to share with them law and gospel, we really shouldn't be giving them the option of what they want to hear first. Because what they hear first is going to depend on where they are in their walk with God and in their faith life. Hence the listening part and the asking part of witnessing that we have been talking about. Remember, what the Catechism has taught us, what the Scriptures have taught us, the law shows us our sin. It is a mirror. And it shows us who we are in God's eyes, left to our own devices. How we are conceived and how we are born, sinful. That's what the law's job is. It convicts our conscience so that we will see a need for the gospel. People always need to hear the gospel. No doubt about that. The tricky part is knowing how much they need to hear the law. If a person is already feeling guilty or ashamed or unworthy, then more law heaped on them probably is not a good thing. It only make them feel worse, more ashamed, more guilty, more unworthy. What they then really need to hear is the gospel. But if someone is self-righteous, if someone is not seeing that they are a sinner, not seeing their own sin, then they need to hear the law to drive them to despair about their own efforts to save themselves. If they're smug about their sin, then they need to know that God is deadly serious about it. They need to hear the conviction of the law so that they see sin the same way that God sees sin. And so by listening and by asking those people that you are seeking, you will be ready for the Holy Spirit to reveal you, to you, the right time to share the gospel. As we listen, as we ask, as we seek out these people and seek where they are in their faith walk, I want you to remember one thing. The person that you are in front of when you are witnessing to them is a person that Jesus died on the cross to save. I think that sometimes we miss that. We know that Jesus died for us. 
But do we know that Jesus died for everyone else? I think that in an abstract way or in a general way, we know that. But if you were to think about that, the person sitting next to you at work or in school or walking down the street or driving next to you, that's a person that Jesus died for as well. And as you understand where they are in their walk life of God, do they need to hear the law? Then pronounce the law on them, but then always follow it up with the glorious good news of the gospel. You know what the gospel is. We've helped you understand that in a very simple way, that Jesus was born to be our substitute, lived perfectly to be our righteousness by faith, died on the cross to save all people from all their sins, and then rose from the dead on the third day, on Easter Sunday, so that we too will rise from the grave one day. Death no longer has any mastery over us. Death is not something that we need to fear anymore. And then Jesus ascended into heaven with the promise that he will come back to take us to be with him in paradise forever. But before that happens, we are his witnesses. And we share with them, we witness to them about Jesus, both law and gospel. Now we have two more letters in the acronym LASSIE coming up. Next week we'll get invite and encourage, but I want to encourage you right now. Those of you who are his witness, that's the heart work for today. Again, you may be feeling overwhelmed. I don't have the tools, I don't have the, the words to say. 1 Corinthians 3, 7 is very important then, and I think encouraging. Where Paul tells us and comforts us with the words, neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything. You are the planter, you are the waterer, but it is God who does the growing. It is the Holy Spirit who uses you as his instrument to convert them to faith, to strengthen their faith. You don't have to do any of that. We plant, we water, God gives the increase. The Spirit testifies. He uses our words and we use his words and he is the one that does all the work. So, as Jesus says, everyone is witness. You will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. If able, please stand. And we'll sing the last stanza of Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, bottom of page 7 of the service folder. seated and we gather our tithes our offerings and our we care cards at this time
Thank you. In your mercy, O Lord, hear the prayers of your people as we call to you on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. Gracious God, you have established your church through your holy word and called people to wear your name and do your bidding. Guard her against all false doctrine and provide to her faithful pastors to preach your word and administer your holy sacraments. Give to us church workers who will serve us in your name according to their gifts and your purpose. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Lord, you have set before us life and good, death and evil. Grant to your people faith in Christ our Savior and the desire to keep your commandments, loving you above all things and loving our neighbor as your Son has loved us. Enable us to seek for those who do not yet know Jesus Christ as their Savior and to share the message of eternal life through him. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Lord, you sustained hope through the ages by raising up workers and leaders in each congregation. This weekend, we remember the Board of Christian Education, Marvin Sneller, Dennis Rush, Becca Carlson, Laura LaCroix. We further pray for the Early Childhood Center of St. Matthew, all of the parents and families, the caregivers, those who instruct, and all the children who attend the Early Childhood Center of St. Matthew. Lord, in your mercy, Mighty Lord, your power is greater than the works of man. Guide and direct those whom we have elected to serve us on all levels of government. Protect those who defend us against our enemies and bless the emergency personnel who come to our aid in times of disaster and need. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, we bless you for granting us opportunities to give you special thanks. We, thank, we give thanks with Julia Ketchum, who celebrates her birthday this week, and with Eleanor Francisco on the occasion of her 85th birthday. Lord, in your mercy, healing Lord, you are our very present help in time of need. Deliver the sick of mind, body, or from their ills according to your mercy, especially Kristen Skinner, Marvin Sneller, Bob and Penny Martins, Kristen Bassler, Kristen Peterson Wisher, Ernest Tolberg, Marilyn Ellinghusen, Margie Mock, and Corinne Chambers Boucher. We pray for friends of St. Matthew, Becky Nall, Cheyenne Johnson, Peggy Ventrelli, Forrest Happ, Gerald and Dee Stryker, Beverly Debs, Doug Fromke, Whitman Williams, Ryan Ackerlin, Carol Pendon, Irene and Dan, and the parents of Jane Rade. We pray for those who are homebound, especially Florence Barons, and we take a moment to remember those in the quiet of our own hearts and minds. Grant them the full measure of your consolation and love, whether in healing of their affliction, strength to endure under trial, or the perfect healing of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal Lord, we recall with thanksgiving all those who have loved your appearing and who have departed this life in faith. We remember particularly the family and loved ones of Joe Cressera, and the family and loved ones of Lowell Sneller, the brother of Marvin. Encouraged by your favor toward them and their faithfulness to you, we pray you to keep us in the fellowship with them and, at the last, to bring us with them to the marriage supper of the Lamb in your kingdom, which has no end. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you know before we pray the needs of your people. Hear our prayers, for we trust in you to grant to us all things needful for this body and life, and to bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation is invited to please stand as we sing the offertory hymn in the middle of page 8 in the service folder.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. And ceaseless worship, holy, holy, holy cry. He who is, who, who was, and will be, God Almighty, Lord Most High, Praise and honor, power and glory be to him who reigns above. With all his hands have fashioned all for God. And pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for the remission of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me, and the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Welcome to the table. Can we move over? This is the true one of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. 
Welcome to the table. The Lord has Please stand, and we'll sing stanza six towards the top of page 10 of the service folder. All praise to you, ascended Lord, all glory ever be. To Father, Son, and Holy Ghost through all eternity. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Congregation, please be seated for just a few announcements. We do give thanks to the Lord that you are here in his house this day, and we ask you to please, sign, those of you who are new, uh, please sign the guest book out underneath the monitor in the church uh, narthex the lobby area there take a moment to say good morning to your brothers and sisters in christ over a pastry a cup of coffee a juice uh, and recognize someone who you may see almost every week but you've never met them no, no or have forgotten their name 
We currently are having difficulty with the messaging on our phone system. We've been telling you about that, and we're in the process of trying to get that fixed. The next adult discipleship class, that's for new members or members who would like to have a refresher, uh, will begin Sunday, March 1st. 2020, and this is an 11 a week class. It meets Sunday mornings at 920, with the exception of Easter Sunday morning. Bread for Life is next weekend, so please don't forget to bring in your bread and food items for the Cool Food Pantry. The Pause to Pray is a prayer request resource from the Comfort Dog Ministry. It's located on the board out there in the narthex, but you also have little pads to be able to write down who you would like a prayer for, and you can post it on the board there um, so that we can pray for them, and we, we pray for them also Monday night at, the, um, at our uh, Good News Callers uh, sir, uh, work, little service and then prayers. St. Matthew Spiritware is now available. There's a notice in the e-news and also a flyer in your service folder. Uh, a couple of things for the youth and young adult ministry. Young adult hangout for 18 to 30 years old will take place on February 27th. That is the day after Ash Wednesday. And by the way, there's a misprint on some of the publications. We have Ash Wednesday services both at noon and at 7 o'clock on that day. Okay? Um, Vacation Bible School registration is also open, and then the Easter breakfast will take place Easter Sunday morning. Um, as you heard in the prayers, and some of you may already know, uh, our brother in Christ, Joe Crisera, was summoned home to heaven. Um, the visitation will be at, on Friday night in Christon Funeral Home, I believe. Yes, Susie Dean? Right here? Okay, it'll be right here on uh, Friday night, and then sun Saturday, the, there's a visitation at 10, and the funeral will be at 11 o'clock here on Saturday. With those things in mind, let's stand, please, and we'll sing on what has now been sown. It's printed on page 12 of the service folder. On what has now been sown, blessing, Lord, bestow. 